welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar and this is the first course we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham sachidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat charikarti बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया वी आर स्टडिंग तत्पुरुष समास इन डिटेल इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर कोर्स we have stated that tatpurusha samasa is the most productive amongst all the four categories of samasa namely avyayi bhava tatpurusha bahuvrihi and dvandva tatpurusha samasa also has got so many varieties in comparison with other samasas we also stated that tatpurusha samasa is explained by panini in his grammar in with the help of numerous sutras in comparison with the other samasas be it samasa vidhayaka sutras or samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutras or samasa swara vidhayaka sutras the formation of the tatpurusha samasa can be explained in brief in the form of this simple equation where we have x and y and they are independent and separate entities they having independent and separate meaning and word form and also accent now the important point is that these two independent separate entities are interlinked semantically and so the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge these two entities together and generate one entity as the output so the process of compounding happens and the output generated is xy remember this is one output one entity xy having one meaning having one word form and also one accent this is ekarthi bhav there are three features that are visible here they are aikarthya aikapadya and also aikasvarya as far as the tatpurusha samasa is concerned y which is highlighted in the bold characters assumes the state of the head of the compounded form what this implies is that when xy becomes part of the sentence and then when xy gets interrelated with any external word in the sentence this interrelation happens through y and by default x cannot be having any interrelation with any other external world word in the sentence without going through y when this happens and when such compounds are found they are treated by the grammatical theory as exceptions and termed as asamartha samasas we also studied the vibhakti tatpurusha initially as one of the major sub varieties of the tatpurusha compound now we are studying the karma dharaya and we said that the karma dharaya compound is stated in the section 2149 up to 72 this is governed by the adhikara samanadhikaranena 
Tatpurusha, the term karmadharaya is defined as Tatpurusha samanadhi karanaha karmadharayaha. That Tatpurusha in which the constituents denote one and the same entity as referent is termed karmadharaya. The state of being samanadhi karana is samanadhi karanya, which is explained in the following line. Bhinna pravritti nimittasya anekasya shabdasya ekasmin narthe vrittihi samanadhi karanyam. When many words having different purpose of usage, when they stand for one and the same entity, those words are said to be co-referential, samanadhi karanya being the relation. Now let us study the remaining sutras in the Karmadharaya section in this particular lecture. The first one is Kritya Tulyakya Ajatya. There are two words in the Sutra. This is 2168 and the two words are Kritya Tulyakya and Ajatya. Kritya Tulyakya is 1 slash 3. Pratipadikas having Kritya suffix at the end and also Pratipadikas meaning similar, Tulya. Now because this word is in the Prathama Vibhakti, the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam will apply and assign the term Upasarjana to these words and then Upasarjanam Purvam will ensure the Purva Nipata occupying the initial position of the Samasa. The second pada in the sutra is ajatya, which is instrumental singular, which means with the words denoting non-generic property. Ajatya, non-generic property. Generic property is jati and non-generic property is ajati. The word denoting non-generic property is ajati shabda. Now, the words continued are sup, sahasupa, and also samartha padavidhihi and also samanadhi karanena in the instrumental case meaning with the same referent. So the meaning of the sutra is any subanta whose pratipadikas are, have kritya suffix at the end and also whose pratipadika means similar is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta which denotes non-generic property meaning. I repeat, any subanta whose pratipadikas have kritya suffix at the end and also whose pratipadika means similar is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta which denotes non-generic property meaning. So the overall structure is this, the Pratipadika in the Purvapada is either ending in the Kritya suffix or it is Tulyakya and the Uttarapada having the Pratipadika which does not denote the generic property. If this is the input, the output generated would be the Kritya suffix ending Pratipadika or the Tulyakya Pratipadika and Ajati Pratipadika. This is the example. Food should be consumed when warm. When this meaning is to be expressed, we have the Laukika Vigraha Bhojyam Ushnam. Now, Bhojya is derived by adding the suffix ya to the verbal root Bhoja. So, ya is a kritya suffix. So, bhojya means something that should be eaten, something that should be consumed, because kritya suffix means kar karma over here. So, now we have bhojyam and ushnam referring to one and the same entities, and so there is co referentiality relation between them, and so now we have the semantic relatedness. So then bhojya plus su and ushna plus su, this is the alaukika vigraha, 
so the samasa saudhnya takes place so the pratipadika saudhnya takes place and then supodhatu pratipadika yo applies and deletes both the supratyas which are part of this pratipadika and then finally we apply the sandhi rule and we get the finally derived compound output namely bhojyoshna which means the same thing as bhojyam ushnam similarly we will also get the meaning which is to be expressed namely water should be consumed when cold and then we get the compound output by undergoing the same procedure as paniya shitam paniyam shitam they have co-referentiality and so the compound process happens and the output generated is paniya shitam paniya is the word ending in kritya suffix aniya added to the verbal root pa meaning to drink similarly we have the word form tulya shweta derived when the meaning is similar to white tulya means similar and sadrusha is also the synonym of tulya so when similar to white is the meaning to be expressed tulya and shweta even though they mean different things they refer to one and the same entity so there is samanadhi karanya therefore there is semantic relatedness so the compounding process happens and so after having done the entire derivational process we get the finally derived compound output namely tulya shweta similarly sadrusha shweta let us now go to the next sutra varno varnena this is 2169 here there are two padas in the sutra varnaha and varnena varnaha is 1/1 meaning color now because this is prathama so prathama nirdishtam samasopasarjanam will assign the term upasarjana to the word denoting color and the other pada in the sutra is varnena but that is in tritiya but the first word pad varnah because it is in prathama so upasarjanam purvam will ensure that this varna occupies the first position in the samasa varnena is instrumental singular which means with color words continued are sup and sahasupa also samartha padavidhi and also samanadhi karanena in the instrumental case meaning with the same referent so the overall meaning of the sutra is any subanta whose pratipadika means a color is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta which denotes a color i repeat any subanta whose pratipadika means a color is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta which denotes a color so the point is if you have varna plus su as the purva pada and varna plus su as the uttara pada the output that one gets is varna and varna as the compound output so now if we have the meaning something which is red and spotted red and spotted namely lohita and saranga they both refer to one and the same entity even though the meanings are different so there is co-referentiality and so the compound process takes place and we get the form lohita sarangaha similarly when we have the meaning black and white to be expressed we have krishna chasa udhavalasch as the laukika vigraha and so there is samanadhi karanya because both krishna and dhavala even though they mean something different they are referring to one and the same entity having both the colors 
and so there is co-referentiality, so there is semantic relatedness, and so they get compounded, and so we have Krishna plus Su plus Dhavala plus Su as the Alaukika Vigraha, Samasa Saudhnya takes place, Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place, Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho now applies and deletes both the Su Pratyayas, which are part of the Pratipadika, and so we get Krishna plus zero, plus Dhavala plus zero, and then we join the words together and we get Krishna Dhavala as the finally derived compound output. Then we have the next sutra, Kumaraha Shramanadibhi, 2170. There are two padas in the sutra, Kumaraha and Shramanadibhi. Kumaraha is one one, meaning young boy, because it is in Prathama, it is assigned the term Upasarjana, and then Upasarjanam Purvam applies, and this will occupy the initial position of the Samasa. Shramanadibhi is a reference to a group of words that begins with Shramana. Shramana means female mendicant, and this is in instrumental plural. Words continued are Sup Sahasupa, Samartha Padavidhi, and also Samanadhi Karane Na. So here the sutra assumes the relation of co-referentiality to exist between Kumara, which is masculine, and Shramana, which is female mendicant. And that will pose some problem, and in order to solve it, we will resort to the meta rule that we have seen earlier, Pratipadika Grahane, Linga Vishishta Syapik Grahanam. So the meaning of the sutra is, any Subanta whose Pratipadika is Kumara is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent Subanta which denotes a female mendicant, etc. So the meaning of the sutra is, any Subanta whose Pratipadika is Kumara is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent Subanta which denotes a female mendicant. As we said earlier, in order to establish the co-referentiality, we'll have to apply the meta rule, namely Pratipadika Grahane Linga Vishishta Syapik Grahanam. So now we understand that the word Kumara also stands for Kumari, the feminine form after adding E to it. And so Kumari is now a young girl. So now the Laukika Vigraha would be Kumari Chasau Shramanacha. So Kumari and Shramana, they both are referring to one and the same entity now. So there is semantic relatedness in the form of co-referentiality. And so now the Samasa will happen. So Kumari plus Su plus Shramana plus Su, this is the Alaukika Vigraha. Now Samasa Saudhnya takes place, Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place. Then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and the sub gets deleted. So we have Kumari plus zero plus Shramana plus zero. And so we have Kumari Shramana. And then finally, we also apply the Pumvad Bhava, where Kumari is taken back to the Pratipadika form. And so we have Kumara Shramana. Because Kumari and Shramana are co-referential and both of them are in the feminine gender and so the conditions for striya pumvat bhashita pumska danum samanadhikarane striyam apurani priyadeshu apply and so the pumvat bhava operation takes place so we get the finally derived compound output in the form of kumara shramana Similarly, we get Kumara Pravrajita and also Kumara Tapasi as outputs of the same sutra. Next, we go to Chatushpado Garbhinya. This sutra also has got two padas. This is 2171. 
द फर्स्ट पद इज चतुष्पाद विच इज वन वन फोर पीड दिस इज प्रथमा विभक्ति सो बाय द सूत्र प्रथमा निर्दिष्ट समासोपसर्जनम दिस विल बी टर्म्ड एज उपसर्जन एंड देर विल बी पूर्व निपात सो दिस विल ऑक्युपाय द इनिशियल पोजिशन ऑफ द कंपाउंड देन द सेकेंड वर्ड इज गर्भिण्य विच इज इन द इंस्ट्रूमेंटल सिंग्युलर विच मीन्स विद द वर्ड garbhini garbhini means pregnant the words continued are sup sahasupa samarthap padavidhi and also samanadhi karanena meaning with the same referent so the overall meaning of the sutra is the following any subanta whose pratipadika denotes a four peed animal is compounded with the other interrelated co-referent subanta namely garbhini i repeat any subanta whose pratipadika denotes a four peed animal is compounded with the other interrelated co-referent subanta namely garbhini so when the meaning is to be expressed in the following manner a cow who is pregnant so in order to express this we have gauscha asau garbhini cha now go and garbhini both these words they even though mean different thing different things refer to one and the same entity over here so they are related as co-referents and therefore there is semantic relatedness therefore compounding can happen and so the speaker of sanskrit compounds them the process of the compounding begins so we have go plus su plus garbhini plus su as the alaukika vigraha and then samasa saudnya happens so then pratipadika saudnya takes place and then supodhatu pratipadika yo applies and deletes both the supratyayas so we have go plus 0 plus garbhini plus 0 as the output and then when we join these two words together we get go garbhini as the compound output finally derived compound output go garbhini and which means the same thing as gauscha so garbhini ch similarly we also can generate aja garbhini and some other compounds of this kind the statement in the traditional commentators on this sutra is chatushpad jati riti vaktavyam what it means is it should be said that chatushpad should refer to a species only and not to anything else so that's why go and aja these are the species that are referred to and therefore this compound is possible in accordance with this particular statement chatushpado garbhinya now we come to the last sutra of this particular section dealing with the karma dharaya samasas and this is mayura vyamsaka dayascha 2172 and there are two padas in the sutra mayura vyamsaka dayaha this is prathama bahuvachana and ch what this means is that the group of words that begins with mayura vyamsaka this is the meaning of mayura vyamsaka dayaha ch means and and ch is an indeclinable avyaya what this sutra means is that and the group of words that begins with mayura vyamsaka mayura vyamsaka means a cheat peacock vyamsaka means a cheat mayura is a peacock so mayura vyamsaka stands for a cheat peacock etc they are also termed as the purusha samasa the other example of this kind is chhatra vyamsaka a cheat student now the point is that in mayura vyamsaka and chhatra vyamsaka mayura and vyamsaka 
they both are referring to one and the same entity. Also in Chhatra Vyamsaka, even though Mayura and Vyamsaka mean something different, they are referring to one and the same entity. So there is co-referentiality between the two. So there is semantic relatedness. Now Mayura is the Visheshya and Vyamsaka is the Visheshana. But now in accordance with the previously studied Sutra, Visheshanam Visheshyana Bahulam, Vyamsaka should occupy the initial position in the compound. Whereas in this case we see that it is occupying the second position in the compound. And so this is clearly an exception and that is the reason why a group of words having this kind of behavior which is not in conformity with the rules laid down earlier, they are all collected together and put into one bag, put into one gana, so to speak, and stated that these words are also used these words are also to be considered as grammatical words. So the qualifier here takes the final position of the compound and yet these words are declared to be the words in the usage and such a sutra then is called Nipatana Sutra which brings into the grammatical system elements which otherwise do not conform with the rule-based system. Now this particular bag as we have studied before is primarily to account for usages like Mayura Vyamsaka and Chhatra Vyamsaka. But in this are added several other elements. For example, Ehida Dayo Anyapadarthe. So the words are Ehi and Ida primarily. These are both of them the Tingantas and so they are not fit to be compounded because they violate the basic condition of the compounding and yet we see these exceptions happening. Both the words are merged together by the speakers of Sanskrit and also the meaning is peculiar because they mean something else which resembles the way Bahubrihi compound denotes the meaning but still they are termed as the Purusha for the purpose of the accent and so on. So, Ehiradayo Anyapadarthe is a statement which brings together Ehida. So, the compounds Ehida denote the other meaning out of the compound. What it means is the following Ehida iti yatra karmani vartate. So, an action in which these words are constantly uttered Ehi, come, Ida, etc. So this action will be called Ehida. What it actually amounts to mean is that Ehi is not referring to any action. Ida is not particularly referring to any action but to the word Ehi and to the word Ida which refers to an action. So at the outset these words seem to refer to an action but rather they Rather, the close scrutiny reveals the fact that these words are referring to the word form as the meaning, which is a very basic and fundamental principle accepted in Paninian grammar. Nonetheless, ehi and ida otherwise are tingantas and are not supposed to be compounded, but here they are compounded and they are therefore clubbed together in this particular bag of words. Similarly, we have Ehiyavam, Apehidvitiya, etc., which are also clubbed in this particular bag. Also, Uchavacham, Udakcha Abakcha, high and low, and the output generated is Uchavacham. Then there is another statement which says, Jahi Karmana Bahulam Abhikshne Kartaramcha Abhidadhati. What this means is that the word jahi, meaning strike, this is a tinganta, this is many times compounded with the object. So strike something, that something gets compounded with jahi. With repetition of saying intended, abhikshni, 
and when the compound denotes the agent of saying. So one who says this. For example, jahi jodam iti abhikshnyam ya ah sa jahi jodaha. Joda is chin, so one who keeps on constantly saying, strike the chin, strike the chin, that fellow, that person is called jahi joda. Here again, the word jahi and joda are primarily referring to the word form. And so they are grouped together as forming compound and they are listed in this particular group of words called Mayura Vimsakadi. So one who keeps repeatedly saying Jahi Jodam, strike the chin, is called Jahi Joda. Similarly, one who keeps on repeatedly saying hit the pillar is referred to as Jahi Stamba. Similarly, we have another statement, part of this group, Akhyatam Akhyatena Kriya Satatye. Akhyatam Akhyatena Kriya Satatye. What this means is that the Tinganta verb gets compounded with another Tinganta verb when the compound indicated the repeated occurrence of the actions. So, Ashnita Pipata and Khadata Modata are the examples of this statement. What this means is once again, Ashnita Pibata iti asakrit yatra uchate, a place where repeatedly eat and drink is what is uttered. The words eat and drink, they are uttered. Somebody is constantly saying eat, drink. That place is called eat, drink or Ashnita Pibata. And this is a compound that is formed. Similarly, khadata modata will refer to a place where the words khadata and modata are continuously repeated. This is an open-ended bag, also known as akritigana. It is used to account for varied and formally dissimilar usage as well. And so we have a statement in the later tradition, Avihita Lakshana Stapurusho Mayura Vyamsakadishu Drashtavyaha. So the tradition says that any Tatpurusha compound for which there is no sutra to account for should be placed in this group or in this bag. This happens to be a very good device for the later tradition to account for the compounds which grow in number in the course of time. This is the importance of Mayura Vyamsakadigana and this particular sutra Mayura Vyamsakadayascha. To summarize, in the Karmadharaya compound, there is a meta rule invoked in order to account for the co-referentiality, which says that a Pratipadika also stands for the word form with the gender information added. The device of open-ended group of words is used effectively by the tradition to account for all those forms which are added in the course of time, indicating the delicate relationship between language and grammar, where language is growing and grammar rules are falling short for taking into account this particular growth. So now we come to the end of the Karmadharaya Samasa, which is part of the Tatpurusha. Then we take up the next type of subtype of Tatpurusha Samasa for study in the next lecture. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.